to start out? You want to start? I'll start. Right. Or we can continue with the music. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Flare podcast. I'm uh, one of your hosts, Chris Garcia. And uh, as always, who usually intros the podcast is James Walter. What's up, everybody? You had to start it out that way. I had to. I had to get my what's up in there. Well, how was your week? Chris, my week was pretty long, actually. Yeah. I, like, every day, I'm like, it's got to be Thursday by now. I'm like, nope, it's not Thursday yet. I don't know why. For some reason, between last week and today has just been felt really long. I don't, I don't know why. Yeah, shows, I guess, I don't know. It shows you you're ready to do the podcast. I was ready to podcast, that's for sure. I had a lot we want to talk about. This episode is probably going to push the limits of our camera's ability for recording in a row. It's totally so hopefully we stay within the limits, because otherwise we'll have to come up with a third segment. That's fine. Uh, How was your week, Chris? It, it was great. Uh, I actually went to Wilmington uh, visit, to visit Abby and stayed with a couple of her friends, and it's a lot of fun. Well, Abby, I'm, who I'm you know from the Zelda quiz. Episode 9. Episode 9. Episode 9. That was, a that was pre-YouTube. That was pretty YouTube, right before It was YouTube. literally right before YouTube. One of the best episodes I think we had. It was pretty good. But yeah, that Not was Not like last, last week's four-man brawl, free-for-all. Jeez. It's a hectic talking <laughs> over everybody, just like WrestleMania, which just happened. In California. In California. We'll get to that which later Which was on. weird seeing The Undertaker walk out in the daylight, but we'll talk about that later. We'll talk later. If there's time, which hopefully Definitely. there is. I went to a venue, saw some music, but that's about it. I mean, cool, nothing, cool. nothing too much on Tuesday, but that was about it. All right, cool. I'll cool. talk about that later. Yeah, let's get to, let's get into the show. We we can get into some of this more uh, crazy stuff going on. Definitely, we got, so what some, you got for us? we got some great stories here. Uh, we got a tablet, nifty tablet. Here. We got the tablet of the Definitely. show. Definitely, it's better, it's smaller, more compact. But uh, this one's uh, from police officers. You know, you can say whatever you want to about police officers, but we got some great news sitting here. There's a lot of good police officers oh, in definitely, the world. Definitely. This one comes from our uh, great state of Michigan. Um, the police were called in February. I don't know why it's being posted now, but this is back in February and we're already into April. But uh, two police officers were called to the scene. Uh, not much of a crime, I guess you can say, but it is against the law to have your, chi uh, your child not in a car seat. Um, a McDonald's worker called... Uh, the police, because they were worried of a child's safety who was 10 months old, um, who was sitting in her mother's lap in the McDonald's drive through which entails that the well, child did not have a car seat at all. Now, when the police officers arrived at this scene, um, instead of writing a citation to the woman, they decided to put all their money together and buy this woman uh, a car seat for her child. Now... We've heard some great cop That's stories. Nice. We've we've heard some great we've cop heard stories. Some good cop like stories. That, so definitely, there's plenty of them that are out there. That there's tons of good cop stories. Definitely, there. and I mean, cops are doing stuff like this all the time that doesn't get noted anywhere. Mm -hmm. That uh, they just do as part of their duty to help people. You know, honestly, it's not even a matter if they're police officers. I think they're just great. No, they're just beings. nice people. There's nice people. They're just like, good uh, people out there. Like our our Chick Fil A manager. Exactly. You know, so uh, that is a great short story that we can produce here. Uh, but going back to Kansas, we Is have... Toto there? Most of our listeners are under the age. They, they don't remember that story. How do you know the age of our listeners? Well, Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. I mean, technically, the Wizard of Oz is older than you are also. But I've seen it. Has anybody... Has everyone seen it? Have you, have you seen oh, it? Oh, well, send us your emails if you've seen... Of course, if you're that young, you're probably not email. So send us a tweet... <laughs> If you've seen The Wizard of Oz or not. Have you seen it? Oh, many times. How long ago? Or what was the last time you saw it? Uh, I don't know. Well, this goes nothing about The Wizard of Oz. Okay. So what does this have to do with Kansas, then? We've got a uh, young man named Jeff Hansen. He's from Overland Park. Uh, he's, Hi, Jeff. He, is, uh, diagnosed, he was diagnosed with neurofibromatosis. I had to practice that before the show. What's wrong with this tosis? Neurofibromatosis, which I guess it has to do something with his brain. Oh, okay. So yeah. why do they call it ptosis? I have no idea. If you're a know. science major, please what's tell us. What's ptosis have to do with it? What's ptosis have to do with it? Metatosis? I don't know. Anyways. That's metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. That's something different. 
<laughs> not about the Amiibos, not the um, That's an Amiibos. Amiibos. <laughs> All right, we're getting way off. So way what's off. with this guy? Well, he uh, he developed a talent to paint. Even though he's blind, he has just developed a great talent. Uh, you know, Wait, like, how does he paint if he's blind? Well, let's take a look is here. Is he legally blind? Like our good friend Abby? Well, he is eventually left... Uh, it says genetic disorder, which caused a brain tumor that eventually left him legally blind. Uh, but regardless of his vision loss, at 21 years old, he's as old as I am. He's your age. Oh, yeah. by the way, and I time out him. real quick. Abby, not Abby who's on the show, different Abby friend who's legally blind. Just wanted to throw that out there in case poor, you guys were wondering. Poor Abby. We know who she is. <laughs> I, I just realized we know two Abby, so I didn't want any confusion. A-B-B-Y. Yes. But, uh... He's 21 years old, as I am, but I'll be turning 22 Ooh, next week. Isn't that fancy? No, not really. Next week? April 11th. Oh, man. That's so cool. I guess. I mean, at least it's not 23, because nobody likes you when you're 23. But... I didn't get time when I was 23. <laughs> he, uh, he's become an accomplished artist, about 1,400 paintings under his belt. Wow. Uh, he has donated more than a million dollars worth of painting to charity. Cool. Big accomplishment if he's going to be... If, why? I, I'm 21 years old. I am. I, I can see perfect. Zero sold paintings under my belt. I can't even draw. Can you draw? I can draw stick men. But they're enough. like this. Can you? Can you I can't even draw a straight line longer than like a dot. Can you? Um, you want to start selling them? You see my stick do? men? Yeah. I think I'd have to pay people to take them. <laughs> start hanging them up in the house then. Yeah. Let's see here. But yeah. Um, the artist's mother, Julie, just introduced him to the art as a distraction from chemotherapy treatments he had, uh, when he was younger. Uh, the hobby turned into a successful business with original sellings for $4,000 each. A famous fan, including Warren Buffett and El Elton John. Elton John? This right here is amazing. And it's very simple artwork, but it's, it's very interesting. And it's, you know... One of these, each of these paintings are very special. Are there pictures in there of his There are. There are. We'll, oh, cool. We'll, we'll put them in the show in notes. In the show notes. So you guys can check out this guy's amazing paintings. Even if it's not good, he's still raised tons of money. Well, he's blind, too. So mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that he can paint at all and I I can't is impressive. So we've got a, uh, the next story we have here is a split story. So this is going to linger. Split story? It's going to linger into. Split screen? Two player? Yes. Okay. It's going to linger into great news. It's also going to linger into our into our tech news, into our technology tech news. news. But of course, 75, 80% of our podcast, we always bring up something. What's about the one thing that's a reoccurring theme on this? 3D printed arms. Robot hands. Robot hands. This one right here is uh, in California, home state. Represent. Seven-year-old Faith Lennox never thought about, uh, about putting a prosthetic limb where her missing left hand has once been. Um... Not until the little girl learned she could design her own, strap it on easily, and jump on her bike and pedal away at speeds previously only imagined. Nice. She designed her own arm. She made her own arm. This is really cool. Uh, can you imagine going to school? Wait, and, she designed it like yeah. she came up with the whole design or she like colored it? Um, I think Either she... Either way, that's pretty impressive. Let's see. Faith firmly placed her new hand bright blue and pink fingers on her bike. So that's she, cool. she probably designed the colors. But can you imagine going to school and not having an arm? No. Well, having a a blue and pink robot hand. Yes. No. Well, not me. I, I would rather have black and red or something like Mine that. Mine would just be all black because that's just the way I roll. <laughs> and you say I'm emo. What's wrong with rolling black? <laughs> Black's emo. a great color. Just painted black. That's right. I saw a red door and I wanted it painted black. Okay. Here's the good stuff. Okay, the good stuff. How much does it weigh? A one pound. Correct. And how much did it cost to make? Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Man, I am so good. It's like I read the story or something. <laughs> um, turns, opens, and closes. It's blue and pink fingers. My favorite color. She noted with a smile. Wait, if she designed it, how does it how does it work? Well, because surely she doesn't have all the stuff to like hook it up to her nerves and stuff. No, like. but that's the thing is. Um, Let's see. Uh, he said a heavier adult model with sensors attached to the person's muscles would run fifteen thousand to two or twenty fifteen thousand to twenty thousand. Well, that's okay because I have the solution for her later What's on that? the show. What's One that? of our stories later on could solve her fifteen thousand dollar problem. We'll get to that. I guess we'll get we can to say that. It. But yes. Um, but hers only costs fifty dollars, so that's good. Yes. She doesn't need my solution. 
Uh, but that's awesome. So she can operate it herself. How does she do it then? I think it's the same thing as the, the boy with the pick. Uh -huh. You know, so basically she just... So he just like flexes her upper yeah. arm and it moves yeah, and exactly. it opens and closes the... I didn't have to learn so much. He said the, uh, the difficulty of navigating and steering the bike with just one hand. Uh, well, I was being said, you know... So basically gonna, she just uses it to grab the brake to, or not? Yeah, to grab things. Definitely. Cool. So um, when Faith quickly strapped on the new creation and headed out to ride Tuesday mornings, TV cameras capture the moment. Langsfield admitted he was nervous. After being up all night finishing the hand, he wanted to test it. Uh, himself to be sure it worked but she did fine with it that's awesome so this she just jumped on her bike with this hand she made and yes. drove it off yes kids are so brave if that was an adult they'd be like hold on i gotta go through like 15 million hours of like practice picking up pencils and she's like hey i want to ride my bike boom boom gets right on bicycle she was like queen she went to ride I her want bicycle to i want to ride my bicycle, bicycle. But um, that wraps up my great stories heading into your technology heading section. Heading into the technology. Now, Chris, I don't know if you know this, but oh, I think that would be okay. But um, yesterday was a bit of a technology holiday. If, How you, so? if you know that. I don't know if you know, but uh, April Fool's is a bit of a big deal for tech companies. As they all try to one-up each other with uh, tech jokes. Please explain. Gags. You'll you'll have to explain this to me. So you know how April time. Fool? You never heard of April Fools? I have heard of April so Fools. I just didn't know. It was okay, a big and you know April Fools is like a big joke day, right? Everyone oh, plays pranks. Definitely. And, so years ago, Google kind of started this trend of like making fake products on April Fools' Day and releasing them. Um, there's like I think last year, the year before, they had one where, like you could type with your eyes, like you could just look at the screen and like you'd read where your mm -hmm. eyes were. You could type with them. Really cool stuff. Um, this year, a ton of companies jumped. I mean, last year, there was a ton of good stuff the year before. If you go to thinkgeek.com, uh, you can go browse all their past April Fool's uh, brochures, mm -hmm. as well as some of their products actually became real products. They were such good ideas. People like wanted them, so they ended up making some of them in their real products. Um, so this year, I thought we'd be fun. If we pulled out some of the tech jokes, so to speak, that happened this week instead of our normal tech news. Well, on account of NASA hasn't done anything really cool this week other than they had a flying saucer test yesterday. Is that? I think it was a joke. It was a joke, okay. I'm pretty sure it was a joke. Well, what were some pranks that people have done okay. in the past? So like in the past, like, like I said, Google had their keyboard with the eyes. Mm -hmm. Um. There was a thing where you could like talk to your computer, which of course now Siri is like a big thing, yeah. right? It's just stuff like that, like nothing okay. that's like super out there, but okay. it's out there enough, right? So this year, Google, their big thing was um, they like to do stuff with Google Maps also. One year, I think it was last year, they had Pokemon, 150, 150 original Pokemon hit them on the Google Maps page, and you could go around and find them and collect them all, and it was just a fun little thing you could do. This year, you could play Pac Man and Google Maps. Okay. If you were to open up Google Maps, yes, um, starting Monday, I think actually is when it launched, Monday or Tuesday, that goes to the end of the week, so you can still actually go do this right now. If you go to Google Maps, go wherever you want. Times Square works pretty well. There's some other locations that work better, but in the bottom left of the screen, there'll be the little Pac-Man button. Press the little Pac-Man button, and the screen will change into Pac-Man. That is really cool. And um, I'll, there'll be the show links. I'd hold it up, but I know that you guys can't see this very well. But it turns into Pac-Man. I think it's kind of cool that the, it's and, um, not the same setup as a Pac-Man movie. And what it does is it, it just things. takes the roads, and it makes the roads full of dots, and then the ghost will have a little starting spot, so you can see in this one, the four little squares where they start. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ghosts start there, and you just go around and eat all, all the dots, like you would in a normal Pac-Man game. But uh, there's endless possibilities. Anywhere there's a road, basically, you can play this. Obviously, some roads will work better than others, mm -hmm. just because of the way Pac-Man works. And uh, I don't think the fruit appears, though, which okay. is unfortunate, because if the fruit did appear, Samsung has the solution for chopping through the fruit. Pac-Man can't eat it. They introduced the Samsung Galaxy Blade Edge. So you know how they have the Samsung Galaxy phones? Yes. They're pretty popular. They have the one now, the edge, that has like the wraparound screen. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the Galaxy Blade Edge. 
It says the blade is sharp enough to cut through a lobster tail. It's tough enough, sorry, to cut through a lobster tail, but sharp enough to slice through a tender tomato. Um, those, those words, not mine, but look at this thing. This thing's waterproof. This thing um, has a blood sensor so that you know if it can't be used in violent situations. And if it is, it'll immediately call 911. That's legit. Um, if the call's by accident, all you have to do is scan your fingerprint, swipe the security pattern, and punch in the 15 digit password and sing along to the random song. And they'll know, oh, you're okay. And they'll cancel the call to the authority. Um, it's waterproof, fireproof, it has a thermometer. It's, I mean, this thing, is, it does everything. And it has all the features of a Galaxy S6. So... It's ergonomic. It's beautiful. The I, Samsung Galaxy Blade Edge. Samsung Galaxy Blade Edge. And you put that in the show notes? I'll put this in the show notes. This what? is cutting edge. Ah, good pun. Literally. So, what does this remind you of? Technology with slicing things? This reminds me... I don't know. Fruit Ninja. Fruit Ninja. Fruit Ninja. You're right. This could track your highest score while you're chopping your fruit. This is how great much idea. fruit you chop. I'm coming up with the Samsung app. The Samsung fruit chopping app. So this is cool. I don't I don't know if they tricked anyone with this one, but it does say you can chop, cut, slice, and dice up to 50% faster than a conventional knife. So it's a safety knife. You can much. slice fruit and dice vegetables. It's got a finger sensor security because you know. You don't want anyone else to cut somebody with your knife. And you want to know who's cutting people with your knife. They're not cutting fruits and vegetables. So that was Samsung's nice little joke. And then, of course, Think Geek had their whole brochure is always good. Mm -hmm. This year they had, remember the Barbie cars? Like the little yes. Barbie Jeeps? Well, they had one that was Ma that was like a Mad Max theme. It was like a dust oh Jeep. God. It had like spikes on it. <laughs> and the kids driving them had like goggles on so they wouldn't get sand in their eyes. That was pretty good. They had the uh, 360 degree selfie stick. It was called the do it your selfie. And it was just a hat that had cameras all around oh so you could gosh. get all of your head in the selfie. Yeah, that was pretty good. I'll, I'll put their, their brochure. Think Geek is very, is that where you bought your smartwatch or did you buy that straight from Samsung? I bought my smartwatch straight from Pebble. Pebble, okay, that's right. right. We talked about But that. I have many of t-shirts from Think Geek, not this one. Think Geek's got some really but good stuff they have on there. so many good t-shirts. I mean, I wear t-shirts. People are like, man, that's a cool t-shirt. I'm like, this was a Thank Geek t-shirt. Don't they have other things like? Oh, um, they have like, like technology, technology wise, technology stuff. They have just anything you could think of, in just goofy forms. I mean, it's just they, funny. They have a lot of Minecraft stuff. They have a lot of Minecraft stuff. They have like Minecraft plushies. They have Star Wars plushies. They're really into Star Wars. They're really into Doctor Who. So if okay. you're into Star Wars or Doctor Who, you gotta go check out the stuff they have. They have like USB guns that like they're like you sit on your desk and plug it in and it shoots like a dart. Uh -huh. But it's like USB power, so like it, it can sense stuff and like shoot at them. They have all sorts of USB power devices to put on your desk at work. They have those cups that it's, change like that they, they yeah. glow after they get hot. They have I'm not, I'm serious. If you haven't been to thinkgeek.com, thinkgeek.com, you gotta go check them out. I will gladly just plug them for free because they are just cool. They got all sorts of cool stuff. You gotta check them out. Video games, movies, TV shows. They just got if 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 it's a thing that exists exists in geek culture, they have something for it. Doctor Who, Star Trek, Star Wars, video games. Um, it's it's just it's endless. They got caffeine gum. Caff they have a whole lot of caffeine stuff. They have bacon flavored stuff. They got everything. Just go check them out, and you'll spend too much money. Thinking you just got free advertisement. Well, I bought a lot of stuff from them, so I feel okay with that. Well, we should sponsor. Now, well, they should sponsor us. I bought, I bought so much stuff from them that my credit card was not so happy one day. And no, that's not true because I only buy stuff when I have money for it. But say that your kid wants to buy something. Your kids don't typically have money. No. But you want to teach them how to use money wisely, right? Yes. So Motley Fool and uh, what was the guy's name? This company. McClowski. So Molly Fold joined up with Larry McClowski to introduce the kitty card. What's the kitty card, you ask? I'm glad you asked. 
So McClowski says growing up, he remembers he wanted a pony, just like he saw in The Godfather. But he couldn't get a pony. See, he learned the sad truth that his family was in $50,000 worth of debt, mostly due to the outrageous 20% interest fees on his dad's mm. credit card. Um, from buying Cabbage Patch Kids, steak knives, you know, all sorts of stuff, right? All the stuff you need back then. All the good stuff you need for the American dream. So McClowski joined up with the Motley Fool to create the kitty card. And this is exactly what it sounds like, Chris. It's a credit card for your child. Now, interest rates are through the roof right now oh, for definitely. credit cards. So Larry said, the interest rates can be 7%. Plus your child's age. So a newborn only has a 7% credit. That's right, a newborn. And then it adds 1% every year. So your six year old will only have a 13% interest on all charges. This is insane. So if they want to buy something. If they want to buy something, all they got to do is pull out their kitty card. And where is it accepted? Well, it's accepted in 43 states and Tijuana. So Visa and MasterCard better look out because this is going to be serious. Now, if that's not good enough that your baby can be in the store and be like, you know what, I want I want that bottle. And your mom's like, no, no, we're buying you the $1 bottle. I was like, no, I want the $20 bottle because it looks better. He can just pull out his kitty card and be like, swipe it, get the $20 bottle. Now, the credit limit for a kitty card, how much credit do you think a kitty card needs? I'm not sure. $5? $10? $100? Larry laughed and said, no, $10,000 credit limit. And if you maintain a D plus average, it goes up to $15,000. It's accepted in most arcades and circuses. Oh my gosh. Now, if that's not enough, who wants a boring rectangle credit card? Nobody wants that. They got football shapes, octopus shapes, they even got Taylor Swift shaped credit card. Now, the kitty card is accepted in most businesses, and they've been testing it in Bangladesh for 20 years. Oh my gosh, this is the first time I've heard about it. And, and it works great. They said it's, been, it's gone over so well in Bangladesh that they're ready to bring it to the U.S. market. Who pays, for, who pays the credit card? The, the child. You, got, you teach your child. So you give an allowance and they pay the credit card off. Exactly. Okay. Now... The application only takes 30 seconds. And he said the thing about maybe adding like a coloring thing, we got a color first to make sure that like it's a human and not a robot. But he said it's easy. And if your kid reaches the limit and you need more, just have a second kid and they can get a kitty card also. Oh my gosh. Are you sure this is not an April Fool's joke? Chris, why would you think this is an April Fool's joke? Because we just had April Fool's. Oh. We just talked about technology. Okay, so let me tell you how I heard about this. I listened to the Motley Fool's podcast. Okay. Um, and on Margaret Fuller, which is their daily podcast. Daily? Um, daily. They have two daily podcasts, oh, actually. Wow. Now, Margaret, Margaret Fuller, the guy that hosted, interviewed Larry, and they talked about this. Now, I'm listening to it going, the kitty card, okay, this is probably some like Fisher Price type yeah, thing where like it's fake and teaches them how to manage their money. And as I'm listening, I realized he's talking about actual money. And I had to look and be like, what am I listening to? And then I realized, oh, all my podcasts are a day behind because I listen to them at uh -huh. work and I don't have internet at work, so I always listen to them a day after they post. I was like, oh, this is April 1st episode. It's a joke. Mm. But it was like a legit episode. Like, if you weren't wow. paying attention, you would have thought it was a real episode. They never once mentioned that it was April 1st or April Fool's or anything. It was very well done. And while probably not the best I did prank this year, I think it's my favorite just because they went so far as they have it on their daily podcast where yes. they give actual, they talk about actual like market stuff on there. And I, I was like, I was like, I was impressed. This is just too good. So hats off to the Motley Fool crew because Think Geek had a lot of clever products and their products are clever and a lot of them you could probably sell for real. But this was just done so well. I thought I had to talk about it. That was so good. And that's all our April Fool's coverage for this year. So until next year, fool on. <laughs> that's what they say. <laughs> anyway, all right, so we're going to take a quick break. And then we're going to come back. We're going to talk Amoeba. Okay. We're going to unbox our mystery box. Okay. 
We're going to talk WrestleMania. Okay. We're going to talk the movies you didn't watch this week. All right. I did actually watch some. Oh, you did watch yeah. something this week. Okay. And then we're going to talk your questions. Okay. Definitely. And then we'll wrap up. Perfect. So don't go anywhere. This is a great episode. Because we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining us for our first part of our episode. Um, now we got some great news for James. We're going to be unboxing what he's been waiting for for about two days. I, I, I came in a couple days ago, and okay. I've been waiting to share it with the podcast. So, so I don't know what's in the box. You guys are pretty lucky. Is this a mystery box? Or it's do a you mystery know? box. Do you know, no, what's know what's in the box. Okay. You know what's in the box. Although we should get Loot Crate and open up Loot Crate on the show every month. Definitely. That's fine with me. Yeah. Open it up. I'm gonna use my trusty Cold Steel AK-47. Highly recommended. Os 8A blade. It's an amazing knife. Can you get, I, can you get that at thinkgeek.com? Hi, no. I don't believe you can get this knife, but they do have a lot of knives. Do they have a sword that looks like the um, from Lord of the Rings? Oh, like, they, a pop, like a letter they opener. Probably do. They have zombie survival gear. So if you're into that, they have tons of stuff that's zombie survival related. Ready, James? All right, and the big reveal. Toad! So now I have the Toad Amiibo. We can add him to our collection of Amiibo in our background here. So this is the official unboxing of Toad Amiibo. We'll just put him right in here for now, next to Gold Mario. We put all the new stuff in the front. So now, the Weekly Flare Amiibo Collection is only missing Ike, Shulk, and Meta Knight. And then I will have, we will have everything that's out right now. We'll have a great community of Amiibos following us every episode. And we'll have to go to the next shelf. Well, yes, I'm thinking we're going to start running out of room here soon, especially considering Nintendo not only announced the release date for the next wave of Amiibo, but announced two more waves, plus some extras in the middle for different game releases. So which ones are those? So we already knew that Charizard, Pac-Man, Wario, uh, Lucina, Robin, and Ness were okay. coming out. We thought this month, but it turns out it's not going to be until the end of next month in North America. But they also added Greninja and Jigglypuff. Now, this is great news. We have a release date of May 29th for these. Pre-order started today. Crashed GameStop's website. It's been down all day. All I mean, day since, day? since 3 p.m. when pre-order started. Okay. So I haven't been able to pre-order anything. Okay. Now, the bad news. Ness. You can only buy him at GameStop. Only. Only. Jigglypuff. Can only get Jigglypuff at Target. Now, when I checked Target's website, the page was up, but I couldn't order anything. Now, I thought they were sold out, but it turns out that everyone else was having the same problem. So, don't know. Gonna keep refreshing the page like I did with Gold Mario. Hope it works out for me. Did you check at the break? I did not check Target at the break. I did check GameStop. It was still down. Uh, Greninja will only be available at Toys R Us. Not that surprising, since Lucario was only available at Toys R Us also. These retail exclusives have got to stop, though. It's getting ridiculous. Well, uh, does GameStop, is there GameStop in the UK? Is there Target in the UK? Or can these GameStop is in the world, is worldwide. Target is only in North America. They just closed all their Canada branches okay. recently. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about Toys R Us, but the rest of the world doesn't do these retail exclusives. It's just a North America thing. It's specifically the US. I noticed Toad came in a Royal Mail package. Toad did, did come from over the pond. Okay. He came from overseas. I've imported quite a few. Um, Villager came from Japan, so his box did not say Villager. It said uh, his, his box, in some whatever his name, whatever Villager is in Japanese. Um, Marth came from France. Little Mac, no. Pitt came from the UK. Rosalina came from the US, though. So I had some of them come from overseas. Um, I'm not opposed to importing Amiibo. Um, I'm not opposed to importing anything, quite frankly. I just normally don't. But these retail exclusives have put me over the edge. I try to buy everything from GameStop if I can. If not, I turn to Amazon, all of their affiliate sites until I find them. 
Um, I don't go to eBay though, because I'm not paying a hundred dollars for anything. No, so my limit's about the forty dollar range. You gouge somebody, which is still over twice their retail price. But I feel like forty is I'll pay forty for one to a scalper because good for him. He got one, or I'll buy it from Amazon overseas somewhere, pay for importing it, which still comes out to around like twenty to thirty dollars. But I'm not paying an eBay scalper for a hundred dollars. No, not doing it. I don't have a Shulk yet or a Meta Knight because I, I don't want to pay that ridiculous prices. I think I saw a Shulk for around $30 today on Amazon.com, the US version. So they're popping up now for normal prices, so I'll just buy them when I can now. Then they announced um, some more coming out. They got Dark Pit and Palutina coming out in July. They got Bowser Jr., Pikmin, Zero Suit, Samus, Ganondorf, and Dr. Mario coming out in September. So the Amiibo season... It just keeps on rolling. It's getting crazy. As you said, we're going to run out of shelf space here at yeah, the Weekly Flare. Definitely. But that's okay. I, I'm i pretty proud of our collection. I think it's a nice touch. We have some more. I mean, I think they should come out with more. Let I think they need more. I would buy more, including these Wooly Yoshis. Now, there's a game coming out, Chris, called Yoshi's Wooly World. Um, a couple years ago, there's a game called Kirby's Epic Yarn mm -hmm. that was uh, Kirby, but everything was yarn. So it was a really popular game. I actually didn't play it, but it's very popular. So they're coming out with a new one called Yoshi's Wooly World. Um, in it, Yoshi's made of wool, as is the rest of the world. And you can like unravel stuff to find secrets. Um, it's very similar to Yoshi's Island. It's a kind of an adventure game. Uh, you play as Yoshi. Now these amiibos for Yoshi's Wooly World, there's a green Yoshi, a pink Yoshi, and a blue Yoshi. They're made of yarn. Are you going to get all the above? I'm getting all of the above. All three colors. Rachel loves Yoshi. So there'll be no problems with the Weekly Flare procuring all of the Yoshis. Uh, I'll, I'll get them anyways. I mean, it's a nice... I mean, I have. I already have two Yoshis, three Marios, two Peaches. But you don't have a Yarn Yoshi. But I don't have a Yarn Yoshi, and I want the Yarn Yoshi. I say get all three, put them up here, and get an extra one of your favorite color and put it on the bed. And put it on the bed. That's weird. How big are they? They're the set of the rest the of the same size. I mean, I imagine oh, okay. they might be a little bigger since they got you know make the yarn, but they'll still have NFC chips in them, so they'll still scan into the amiibo games. It'll be cool. Now, there's this game called Splatoon coming out, where um, you're a squid, you soak up ink, then you turn into a human and shoot the ink on surfaces to coat them in your color. Did you ever play Tony Hawk Pro Skater Two? Yes. And you know how there's a game where we had to do tricks off of ramps to make them yours? And you battle. You battle. Yeah, you battle. About point system. It's yes. basically like that, but with squidding. Okay. It's called Splatoon. It's a pretty cool shooter that is a Nintendo exclusive. Even Splatoon's getting in on the Amiibo craze. So as you can see here, there's the Ink Boy, the Ink Girl, and the Ink Squid. Is that Splatoon? Splatoon. Now, if you want the squid, it's only available in the three pack if you buy it with the Inkling Boy and the Inkling Girl. So guess what I'll be buying? The three pack with the squid. Is this only available on Wii U or is it available on other Splatoon games? Splatoon is only on the Wii U. Are you gonna be getting it? I haven't decided yet. With the Amiibo integration, I might pick it up now because- you Might as well check it out. I like the buying. Amiibo integration in games. It makes me pretty happy. Now, there's a lot of Amiibo news we gotta cover. Jeez. And since we talk about the Amiibo news, I felt like we should cover the Amiibo specific news. Amiibos have NFC chips in them. The new 3DS XL has an NFC reader in it that was used for Smash Brothers. Okay. And there's a new Animal Crossing game coming out called Home Designer or something like that. What is it? Happy Home Designers. And it is going to use NFC cards. So it'll be Animal Crossing cards with NFC chips in them with pictures of the villagers. Now, have you ever played Animal Crossing? I have not. Basically, the premise is you move into a town of animals and you have a house and Tom Nook, the store owner, sells you the house for a ridiculous mortgage. You pay it off. Then he builds you upgrades without even asking. He just installs new upgrades. You have to pay those off. It's a vicious cycle. He's like a slave driver. He makes you pay it off. No, it's actually a pretty fun game. But uh, all the villagers are animals. They're different animals with different funny names. And they have different characteristics. And so the new game is going to use these NFC chips to bring those characters into the game. You can design a home to their liking so you can collect furniture and carpets and all sorts of stuff you put in their house. And then your other NFC chips, or NFC cards rather, you can scan in. Those animals will come and visit the game. You can watch them hang out, take pictures. 
Now, the original 3DS and the 3DS XLs do not have an NFC reader. Okay. But the NFC disc that they talked about is finally coming up for 3DS. They will use an IR blaster to send it to your 3D, your 3DS, so that your original 3DS, your 3DS XL, and your 2DS will still be able to take advantage of the NFC capabilities of Animal Crossing Happy Home Designers. So is this a is this a wireless or Bluetooth? This is going to be wireless. So okay. use an IR. I believe it's going to use the IR sensor, which is the same technology that your TV remote uses. Okay. I believe is how they're going to do it. So it's pretty cool. And they're coming out with Amiibos for those? Oh, I believe the Happy Home Designers are just going to be the cards, the okay. trading card style NFCs. Is this something that's Which gonna... I think the idea is that way you can take them with you with your 3DS and put them in like a card pouch and carry it around with you. Is this something that's going to get into like uh, Nintendo Pets and... My guess is they're going to make a Pokemon game okay. that uses the Pokemon cards. Wow. That's my guess. And this is just a test run to see how it does. They even have that online Pokemon battle game. I, yep. I don't even know what it's called. I know a lot There's of a new 3DS it. game coming out that's Pokemon Rumble something. Okay. That's a free 3DS game that you can get from their store. I'm pretty sure they're going to take the two, mix them together for the next Pokemon game. Okay. Maybe not the next one, but the one after that. I, I just think that's where they're going. The Pokemon trading card game was really popular back when mm -hmm. Red and Blue were out. Pokemon's still really popular. They've run out of colors. I think it's going to be Pokemon <laughs> NFC, but they won't call it that. They'll call it something clever. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to be next. And that's all the Amiibo news. Okay. Are you happy about your unboxing? I'm happy about the unboxing. Let us know if you like the unboxing. If you do, we'll definitely find more stuff we can unbox on the show. I know specifically in the end of June, I'll have something we can unbox on the show that's going to be sweet. Hopefully we can get some But soon. that'll have to be a re-unboxing because I don't think I can wait to the show to unbox it. Since it comes out on Tuesday, the show's on Thursday. Maybe we'll just film a separate unboxing for that and cut it in. We'll make sure to wear the same clothes. We'll get something for that because that is going to be a sweet unboxing in June. All right. I've blabbered on enough about Amiibo. Chris, what do you got going on? With What are like, you just, into this week? Just in this week, I'm not really getting into anything. I just, like I said, I you know I watch some great music. Uh, one of my favorite bands. Um, went on vacation, you know, enjoyed the beach a little bit. Just got away for a little bit. You know, I just like, you know, even if I'm still in the state, I, if I drive 100, 200 miles away, I still am away from home and what I'm used to. So I like, you know, if, even if you go somewhere that you're not used to, you know, it's nice. That's to why I go to work every day. It's nice to get away, sit at a desk, work a little bit. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's not why you go to work. I wasn't making fun of you, Rachel. I was saying it's nice to get away from home. Because I'm here. It was not a slam against you. You're only a mile away, less. I'm like 10 minutes away. Like, I'm really getting away. Yeah. If you walk. 10 minutes. If you walk. <laughs> if you walk. You can scooter. If you drive, it's like a minute. And that's mostly starting and stopping the car. Yeah, definitely. Or if the light's red. So did you watch any new movies this week? I didn't watch any new movies. I did any new movies even come out this week? Yeah, there's some that came out today. I think Insurgent came out. Did that come out today? I think. I don't know. Maybe someone said. It might have come out last week. I know a friend of mine was going to go see tonight. Uh, Fast Fast 7. Oh, Fast out. 7 comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, I actually want to see that, but I haven't seen Fast 6 yet. I haven't seen any of them. I don't actually, it's it. Furious 7. Isn't is it, it Furious 7? Yes, because the last one was Fast 6 and Furious 7. Same thing to me. But Fast Five was also Fast Five, so. I guess we'll see what happens. But Fast and Furious 3 was Tokyo Drift. The best one, in my opinion. What was your favorite Fast and Furious? I haven't seen any. It's probably going to oh. be Fast and Furious 46 when they're driving their little scooters. They're, they're floating wheelchairs. Because by then we'll have floating <laughs> Floating wheelchairs. wheelchairs. But definitely. I mean... Well, if you want to talk about them, I, I, haven't, I didn't really see anything. I plan on seeing some movies, um, some older movies this week. I did catch up on an episode of Sherlock, but it was really late when we watched it, and I started falling asleep and snoring and waking myself up by snoring. Well, that's awkward. It's really awkward, and it's embarrassing. So I've got to catch up on some Sherlock, but I'm also wanting to start Turn. Haven't heard of it. Turn is on AMC. It's uh, on the Revolutionary War. And it's a American spy who's actually becomes a British soldier. So 
it's just very interesting that he has to see a lot of different things that the British do to the Americans, but he can't do anything about it because he's technically a British soldier, uh, an American, American turned, you know, pretty much. But interesting. I, interesting. I think I, I think I'll enjoy it. I haven't started it yet, but the first season is on Netflix, so I think I'm going to start that. Uh, how's Bates? Mentality? All caught up. All caught up. Super recent. Just watch this week's episode. Now you're done. Completely caught up. So we're live in the middle of the season now. Okay, good. And it. It's good. Are you familiar with Psycho? The movie Psycho? No, I'm not. Spoilers for everyone who doesn't know. How old is it? Bates Motel is just the pre the prequel to Psycho. How old it's is like it? about Norman while he's growing up. How old is Psycho? Oh, well, I don't know. It came out like, what, in the 50s or 60s or something okay, like that? Okay, that's not a spoiler. Is that right? I don't know. We won't call it. came out a long time. A long time ago. We if won't. you didn't know that Bates Motel was based on Psycho, I don't know how you missed that because it says at the end of every episode. Anyways, it's really good. Norman's starting to get really creepy. But then again, everyone in the show is really creepy. Yeah. So, it's pretty good though. Um, so I think we're going to start watching Psych now okay. during the week when we're not watching Bates Motel. Because Rachel's never seen Psych. Well, you said you were going to start watching that, you know, about so, episode 4 or 5. So, we're finally Lost. all cut up on Lost and Bates Motel. So, it's time to watch Psych. Something a little lighter. Something more like the show. It's just entertaining. Well, you did watch something Sunday, didn't you? We did watch something new on Sunday. WrestleMania. What episode? Or which, which, which one? 40, 31, 30, I 31? believe. I believe it was That's WrestleMania right. 31. Because we had the big old 30 last year. Last year was the WrestleMania. I was going to invite you to come again. I know. But you were at the beach. I was at the beach. I would have been home in time. I got home at 7.30. I see. I wasn't sure what time you were getting back. I yeah. know like how tired you were going to be. True. But man alive. WrestleMania pre-show started at 5 p.m. They spent an hour just talking about what was going to happen that night, which was kind of boring. But you got to watch it. I mean, it's we, WrestleMania. Last year we didn't watch it. We just ate yeah, until yeah, yeah. when it started. So we watched the pre-show at 6 o'clock. The first pre-show match started, which was the Andre the Giant. No. Was the Andre the Giant Memorial match first, I think? And then the tag team match? doesn't matter. There was the Andre the Giant Memorial match, which was awesome. I still really want to see Zack Ryder win because I think he's so underrated. I, I was seeing your tweets about that. But he did okay. He made it in a decent amount. He's about to woo 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 kick someone in the face, and he got pulled out by uh, Bo Dallas, which was not cool. Uh, no, I also want to see our truth win. He made it a little bit further. He also wasn't going to win. No. Big Show won, which I'm not a fan of the Big Show. No, never. No one is. The Big Crybaby Show. But he's a nice guy in real life, apparently. I think I've seen him do some pretty cool yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but most of them are in real life. They're, most of them are pretty cool. Did, uh, what's his name, uh, Kofi Kingston do anything weird? No, nothing too crazy from Kofi this mm. time. Nothing too crazy. But your favorite, okay, so we have John Cena and Rusev? John Cena and Rusev wrestled. John Cena beat Rusev finally. Someone and finally beat him. Got that someone team. finally, finally beat, him. beat him. Got the U.S. belt back to someone who actually likes America. Although I think Rusev is probably just playing a part because he kind of just bought a house in, like, in Florida or Connecticut or... Tennessee, I don't know. But he hates America. He hates America. And his and his. Uh, if you don't know, wrestling's kind of fake. Oh. It's not. It's not like fake, fake. Like they're not actually doing sense. They're really fighting. Who, who's who's? It's like uh, scripted fake. It's like an entertainment. It's like a soap opera. Who's his announcer? Or Rusev is Lana's that girl that comes out with him. Lana. Yeah, yeah. It was really great. But Lana, she's actually American. So Lana. Threw her shoes into the match to try and distract John Cena, which is kind of technically not allowed, but the ref didn't exactly see her do it, so like it's not a disqualification. Yeah. Anyways, she ends up getting, at the end of the match, onto the apron, and she's at the ropes trying to distract the ref. John Cena walks over to, like, be, hey, pay attention to the match. Rusev is going to come and hit John Cena from behind. John Cena sidesteps him. Rusev decks Lana. She oh flies off onto gosh. the floor. He's, like, freaking out upset. John Cena pins him in the suspense of that, wins. It was great. Highlight of the night. I bet. Well, we now, a big John Cena Sting night. came out and wrestled I heard about H. that, too. I was watching that. That match was awesome. That was probably the best match of the night. But just he, because it was so iconic. But he lost. Sting did lose. I, I don't think WWE was going to let someone come in that was such a long holdout from the WCW and win. Yeah. They might... If he was a little younger and actually going to come on and sign a contract with him, but mm -hmm. he's not going to come back and wrestle. No. But it was so iconic. Triple H was out there wrestling. His old group, Degeneration X, came out, kind of helped him out. Some old guys came out from N from the NWO wearing NWO shirts. Came out Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash, the other guy whose name I can never remember because I didn't I don't know who he is that much. 
They came out, Triple H had his sledgehammer, Sting had his bat. He broke Triple H's sledgehammer with his bat. Everyone was freaking out. The whole stadium was going crazy, all like 76,000 people. Triple H gets his sledgehammer in his fist, hits him in the face from nowhere, knocks him out, pins him. I don't think anyone cared who won that match, because let's be honest, we all won watching yeah. that match. That's what you tweeted as well. It was just so good. Now, did uh, The Shield show up or anything like the that? The Shield's disbanded. Okay. That's, um, I haven't caught up in a while. Seth Rollins has the money in the bank. He betrayed him. Really? Yeah. Even after... He betrayed him and joined the Authority. Okay. So he's been walking around with money in the bank since June. Okay. Yeah, June of last year. Now, we still have so, the other two. Brock Les um, yeah, Roman Reigns. Well, we have Roman Reigns, but he's always been true. He's always cool. Dean Ambrose has just gone off the wall. He's, he's crazy. Well, he's been with... He uh, was in the ladder match for... Um, was it the Intercontinental Bell, I think? Mm -hmm. He was in the ladder match for that. He's crazy. Well, he, he joined didn't. Triple H. That was the line. match that our truth was in. That okay. was the match our truth was in. I want him to win that. Of course, he wasn't going to. Yeah. But it was a really good match. He, he was so close so many times. I don't remember who won that match though. It was someone I didn't want to, so I don't. I don't remember. Was it the goat guy? Daniel Bryan. Yes. yes! It was Goat Face. He won the Intercontinental Belt. That was kind of lame. One of the best wrestlers though. Sheamus is now. back, but he didn't wrestle. But he is supposedly back from his injury. Okay. All right, so we got one more match that we need to talk about before we're out of time here in a few minutes. Brock Lesnar versus. That was versus Roman Reigns. I thought it was Undertaker. No, the Undertaker match was against Bray Wyatt. That's right. Okay. Undertaker won. Good. He came back and won, but it's so weird watching him come out in the daylight. Yeah. Especially after Bray Wyatt came out to like really but, creepy zombie stuff. It, well, they couldn't and really Undertaker do the Undertaker just walked out in a cloud of smoke. But they couldn't really do Wyatt's, you know, yeah, 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 in yeah, the yeah. dark, you know. So but it was out outside. outside. The zombies walked out. They were like scared because as he walked by, they started walking. That was cool. Triple H, when he came out, they were promoting, they were doing a thing with Terminator. So he came out just up like with a Terminator thing on, and Arnold Schwarzenegger was talking. And uh, that was pretty cool. You need to go watch those intros if you haven't seen the WrestleMania intros. The WrestleMania intros are always so good. So real quick, but Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar fought Roman Reigns. The match was a really good match. Probably one of the best matches Brock Lesnar's had since his return. Just because they actually like, let it be a normal match. Right at the end, they're about to finish. Seth Rollins comes running out with his Money the Brave briefcase that you can catch in at any time for a title match. He catches it in, makes it a triple threat match, and pins Roman Reigns. No, pins Brock, Brock Lesnar. No, Roman Reigns. Okay. Brock Lesnar, like, he knocked him out. Seth Rollins came out, knocked out Brock Lesnar, who rolled out of the ring. He pinned Roman Reigns for the win. Wins the belt. So now he's got the... It was belt. crazy, because everyone thought for sure Brock Lesnar was going to keep it oh. since he just re-signed it back on with the mm -hmm. WWE. He's not going back to MMA. He's sticking with WWE, so we thought for sure he was going to keep it. Nope. Seth Rollins came out and took it. So it's now Seth Rollins holds the belt. So now the authority has the belt for the WWE Heavyweight Champion, which kind of sucks because yeah. no one really likes the authority storyline anymore. Well... It but might, it might change. He had to use it because Money in the Bank is in like a month, or yeah. a month and a half. It, it might change. You know? So Brock Lesnar gets his rematch, which I don't think Seth Rollins can beat him. So something really weird is going to have to happen for yeah. him to keep it. Well, we got to look at Paige and AJ. I mean, that was a big yeah, surprise. Yeah, was that Paige was a big surprise. That was, so something's going to happen. Nowhere. Something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. I'm I'm starting to get excited for the WWE again. I found out that I can watch Raw on Hulu okay. because we don't have cable anymore. So I found out I can watch Raw on Hulu, so I keep up with Raw and set just the highlights. I had the WWE Network, but Raw can't be on there because they have the sign thing with USA. Mm -hmm. But it can be on Hulu. So I watch it on Hulu. Keep up with what's going on on Monday Night Raw. I don't watch SmackDown, never have. Lawler's on SmackDown now, so I miss seeing him announce on Raw. But oh well. Anyways... We're about out of time. Yeah. So, Chris, say I wanted to follow you on Twitter. Where would I find you? Twitter, like every single week, is never lose heart. That is all one word. Never lose heart. And you can find me on Twitter at James Walter. It's real easy. At James Walter. Maybe we'll get some lower thirds down there and we'll have our, mm. our names and our Twitters. Do you have an Instagram? I don't. 
You don't. Do you have an Instagram? I have an Instagram. That is fight underscore with underscore heart. That's cool. Yeah. And you can find the Weekly Flare Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all at the Weekly Flare. Join us at our home on the web at theweeklyflare.com. You can email us, podcast at theweeklyflare.com. But really, just go to the website. It's all there. There's a new About Us page. You can read some about me, a little bit about Chris, some pictures. There's a new Contact Us page. You can, like, fill it out and email us. Um, yeah. So you can just email us right from the website. The YouTube is linked right onto the website. If you don't like going to youtube.com, just go to theweeklyflare.com. The latest episode is right there on the homepage. It's all super easy. And people are liking the YouTube. That's good. The YouTube is getting popular. Good. They're liking the YouTube. So let us know if you like the YouTube. Like, comment, review us on iTunes. I'm going to try and add us to other streaming services like Stitcher and stuff like that now because why not? So just find us everywhere. Rate us, review us, send us your comments, your likes, your dislikes. If you like the format of the show, if you don't like the format of the show, let us know. We want you to enjoy what you're watching after all. So you keep coming back. Well, anything else you want to plug this week? That's about it. This was a great episode. I thought like um, this was a pretty good episode. It was successful. It's a nice flow. Episode 12 is... I forgot to mention that. This is episode 12 in the beginning. This is episode 12. Welcome to the Weekly Flip. You have to know. You have to listen to the begin, or to the end of the podcast now to know what episode you're listening to. To know what number it is. Whatever it is. All right. So we'll see you again in seven days. Take it easy, everybody. Peace.